a serious and dangerous storm. It's right here in front of me right now. described sections of Yazoo City as looking like a lumber yard. Long track tornadoes. Which ones come to mind? The 1925 Tri-State Tornado? The Tuscaloosa Birmingham Tornado? The Mayfield Tornado? How about the dual state Yazoo City Durant EF4? Despite tracking through Louisiana and Mississippi, over its 150-mile long and 1.75-mile wide path, it is completely unknown. Throughout the 22nd of the 25th of April 2010, 96 tornadoes were touched down, killing 10. All 10 from the tornado just mentioned. In this video, we dive into the meteorological setup, the outbreak, and its aftermath. A complex weather system began to track across the central and southern United States beginning on April 22nd. Dew points only in the low 60s were present across Oklahoma and Texas, and even lower dew points in the high 40s to the mid-50s were present in western Kansas and eastern Colorado. Cape values only reached 1,000 joules per kilogram in the most unstable areas of the day, which is barely enough for severe weather. Wind speeds up to 500 millibar were reaching speeds of 60 knots in eastern Colorado and western Kansas, leading to some wind shear. If you combine all of this, you'd expect some minor thunderstorms to develop and lead to nothing. However... 44 tornadoes touched down in eastern Colorado, western Kansas, and in the panhandles of both Oklahoma and Texas. All were rated EF0 to EF1, except two. Don't let the low ratings deceive you. Lots of these tornadoes were reportedly very large and violent tornadoes that were only rated EF0 to EF1 due to no damage being found. Two tornadoes touched down in southwest of Childress, Texas, as a large rain-wrapped EF2 tornado destroyed a storage shed, a windmill, electrical transformers. Trees were uprooted along the path. Shortly after, a large wedge tornado destroyed an unoccupied house and many farm buildings. Trees and shrubs were also uprooted, farming equipment was overturned, and a heavy steel tank was knocked over. This tornado would be rated EF3. On April 23rd, an upper-level storm system increased in strength as it moved from the southern Rockies to the southern Great Plains region. A cold front moved across east-central Texas, eastern Oklahoma, and the Missouri River Valley through the night. Moist air ahead of the cold front in the south-central states allowed for strong to severe thunderstorms to develop across the Mississippi Valley. A moderate risk of severe weather was issued across the lower Mississippi Valley. There were four EF0 tornadoes and one EF1, one tracking 18 miles across open fields in east Texas and southwest Arkansas during the night and into the early morning of April 24th. On April 24th, an energetic upper-level storm system strengthened as it moved from Texas into the southern Great Lakes region. A cold front moved eastward across the middle and lower Mississippi River Valley before heading into the Ohio River Valley and stretched into the mid-south portion of the United States. And from the cold front, a warm, moist, and stable air mass spread northward from the lower Mississippi River Valley and northern Gulf Coast states into the middle Mississippi and Ohio River Valleys. There were already thunderstorms that had formed during the morning hours, and the conditions would only become more numerous throughout the day. Temperatures of 90 degrees Fahrenheit were present across Mississippi. Dew points were in the mid-70s over Mississippi and Alabama, leading to Cape values in excess of 2,000 joules per kilogram. Winds at the 500 millibar were in excess of 75 knots, leading to extreme wind shear. This set the stage for a significant severe weather outbreak with the potential of strong and violent tornadoes, large hail, and damaging winds. As a result, the Storm Prediction Center issued a high risk of severe weather for portions of Mississippi, Alabama, Tennessee, and Kentucky for the 24th. In the morning, an EF1 and EF2 would be produced in southeastern Mississippi, and at 10 a.m. Central Daylight Time, a tornado would touch down in eastern Louisiana and would move to the northeast. This tornado became strong almost immediately, as it began bending and destroying several high-tension power poles west of Tulala. The tornado then crossed Interstate 20, blowing an 18-wheeler off the road. As it passed northwest and shortly after north of Tulala, it heavily damaged or destroyed several homes before crossing the Mississippi River. It caused near destruction of a chemical plant near the Omega community. It crossed the Mississippi River shortly thereafter and damaged or destroyed numerous homes on the north side of Eagle Lake. 
The tornado then moved across Delta National Forest in Isaguena and Sharkey counties, causing major tree damage and devastating the local wildlife. The tornado again caused significant damage to homes northwest of Satartia, and shortly after, damage occurred to homes near the Cruft community. The tornado then moved through rural areas southwest of Yazoo City, causing major damage or destruction of several homes, as well as intense tree damage. By this point, the tornado was well over a mile wide, and it was rain-wrapped as it entered southwestern sections of Yazoo City. As the tornado approached the intersection of U.S. Route 49 and Highway 16 on the south side of Yazoo City, it reached its widest point of 1.75 miles and its peak winds of 170 miles per hour. Several buildings, including a church, and several businesses were destroyed or even swept away, with little debris left in the lots. The tornado continued moving through residential areas on the southeast side of Yazoo City, heavily damaging or demolishing numerous homes. As it continued northeast through rural eastern Yazoo and southern Holmes counties, causing intense tree damage and damaging or destroying several rural residencies. Whole swaths of trees were cut down like grass under a lawnmower, with intense debarking being observed. As the tornado plowed by the Franklin community in rural Holmes County, it again reached EF4 intensities and destroyed two brick homes and heavily damaged or destroyed several other homes in the area. It then crossed Interstate 55 causing significant tree damage and blowing several vehicles off the road. As it approached the area just south of Durant and crossed US-51, it narrowed and reached one of its weaker points in its track, but it was still on the ground. Initially, it was thought that the tornado lifted here. However, the damage survey was conducted. It concluded that it was still on the ground at this point. However, shortly thereafter, it re-intensified somewhat and began causing significant tree damage in rural western Atala County. As the tornado waned in strength and size, it continued across northern Adela County, causing tree damage and heavily damaging several rural homes, including the community of Hesterville. After intensifying further, it crossed Natchez Trace Parkway. The tornado once again produced high-end EF3 damage as it passed northwest of Weir. Numerous homes were heavily damaged or destroyed in this area. The tornado maintained strong intensity as it crossed the remainder of Choctaw County including damaging a number of homes as it crossed it Highway 415, 9, and Highways 15. The tornado's reign of terror was slowly fading as it rapidly narrowed and weakened as it crossed into Octopa County and dissipated north of the town of Sturgai after being on the ground for nearly three hours, leaving 10 dead across its 150 miles of destruction. But the outbreak wasn't over yet. Alabama was hard hit by tornadoes on this day. An EF4 struck southeastern DeKalb County in the Mount Vernon area. The most serious damage occurred near the intersection of County Roads 80 and 55, where a church and a two-story home were destroyed. Several mobile homes were destroyed, and numerous large trees were snapped or uprooted. Five injuries occurred from this tornado. An EF3 touched down in southern Albertville. 59 homes in Albertville were destroyed by the tornado. Another 198 had major damage, while 157 had minor damage. A total of 414 homes were impacted by the storm. It also caused damage to the middle and high school in Albertville. Another EF3 tornado touched down in Parrish and tracked through Cordova and Corner. Significant damage to buildings occurred in Parrish and Cordova, while Corner and Blount County suffered uprooted or broken trees, with at least one travel trailer overturned and some minor structural damage. Arkadelphia Road near Skyline Road was blocked for a time by fallen trees and debris. A total of 70 to 80 homes and businesses sustained damage from this tornado. A 30 of 3 tornado in Alabama struck a trailer park in Mentone. The tornado destroyed 9 of the 11 manufactured homes in the park. Seven people were injured from it. Weaker, less significant tornadoes would touch down in the late p.m. hours of the 24th and into the a.m. hours of the 25th. The remnants of the system would move off and produce a few more tornadoes on the 25th before the outbreak would end. And with that, it was all over. Many small towns were left in ruins, and the Azu City tornado soaked up all the spotlight from the outbreak. This spotlight is completely missing nowadays. 
The Yazoo City tornado in total, as previously stated, tracked 150 miles, making it the fourth longest tracked tornado in Mississippi history. At its peak, it was 1.75 miles wide, making it the second widest in state history, second only to the base field Mississippi tornado that had a width of 2.25 miles wide. Despite its extreme stats, the tornado and subsequent outbreak is completely forgotten. And after discovering this tornado, it occurred to me that almost no videos talk about this tornado in any content or informative manner. Which made me want to make this video. And if you watched this far, you clearly enjoyed the video. So consider, I can not speak, uh, consider dropping a like and subscribing. I also have a Discord server. Um, so you, if you want to keep up to date with my channel talk about weather and whatnot, then I suggest you join. Link is in the description, and it's the pinned comments. I know I haven't uploaded in two months, but I plan on getting back to it. I have another video that I'm working on right now, so stay tuned for that. I'm back on the upload schedule, and um, yeah, see ya.